All right, how's it going guys? Jake here. Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. I am in the truck. I just left work and I am going to pick up four more IBC totes from my guy that supplies them to me. Um, we will check back in when I get to his location and we'll load them up and head on home. All right, guys, we are all loaded up. Got all four totes. Let's hope we make it home with all four. Just kidding, we should. I got about five straps on them total, I think. So we'll be good. Here we go, heading home. All right, guys, so we are in the truck driving home. We got the four IBC totes. These uh, are the good ones with the full metal base. So I'm excited about that. Um, I was talking to my contact where uh, I get these things and I've gotten a lot of questions about where I, where people can get these, where I get them. And while I'm not going to divulge exactly where I get them, um, because my contact source has uh, kindly asked me not to, um, I will say that the place that I get them is involved with the treatment of water. And um, what he was explaining to me is that normally in the summertime, they go through quite a few of these things, probably about one tote a week. However, with all the rain that we've been having in the area lately, um, they've actually opened up some of the uh, dams that are in their system and uh, that has caused an influx of water and the water is very clean um, because it's all freshly fallen it's not getting uh, regurgitated up from the bottom so to speak um, so they've actually been using a lot less so from what turned into going through one IBC tote a week of the product that uh, they get in them. They now only have been using about one per month, which is bad news for me, but good news overall, because the past couple summers we've had major droughts in our area. Um, so I just thought that I would share that information with you. And for anybody that's out there looking for these totes, I highly suggest you go around to any shop or uh, big, you know, like landscaping operation, especially where they make mulch. Um, just really ask around anywhere that gets fluids or liquids or oils and stuff in bulk I, I've even seen DEF for diesel trucks uh, shipped in these things They typically have them. They might not get as many as you know other places, but um, They're readily available and if you do a little digging research and stuff you can find them for free um, I don't pay anything for these IBC totes. We do a little barter system where I'll bring him some firewood come the winter months um, and he gives me the IBC totes year round so it works out for both of us and uh, yeah just thought I'd share all right guys so we made it home with all four IBC totes still intact and I pull in the driveway and who's here but Shane with his excavator they are finally they got a used replacement track for the Takahuchi and they are putting the track back on the machine. I don't know if they're taking it out of here today, but they got it propped up on a log and they're working on getting it back together. It's back on. All right, guys, so Shane and Travis just left. As you can see, I pulled my truck back here into the wood yard. I also just brought down the tractor along with the three other IBC totes that I had up above that need to be cut. And I figured since I have now, what, seven of these things that are ready to be processed, I might as well do it all at once. So. I just went up and got my Milwaukee power ratchet with the Torx bit on it to take off the crossbars and my Milwaukee uh, battery powered grinder here to cut all the, uh, the sides. And we're just gonna do them all at once. Um, so this might not be the most interesting video or section of the video, but I'm going to unload these four and we're gonna get them processed up. Now, one other thing you might note is that this past Saturday, I did a side job. It, uh, it was a little hectic, a little frantic, scheduling and everything, but 
I was able to get the dump trailer back here finally into the wood yard and out of the front of the driveway. And I brought home this nice load of red oak. There's some pretty big pieces in there. There's also some smaller, really straight pieces. But for the most part, it's all really straight and pretty much crotch free, except for that one big piece at the top um, that has a bunch of crotches in it. But it should make some really nice firewood. We'll definitely have to use the two-way and the four-way wedge. Um, we can't just plow through it with the six-way. But it'll be nice to get that stuff split up. Um, the tree was really dead, um, so th this wood should be relatively dry as far as standing red oak goes. Um, but it was nice to be able to get the big red international truck back here, um, backed it all the way down the road, unloaded or dumped the dump trailer, unhooked that, and then unloaded the cormidi off the back, piled up these logs, so the wood yard is working just the way that I wanted it to. Well, as you guys can see in that really quick time lapse, I was flying through these uh, first four IBC totes with the help of the Milwaukee fuel power ratchet. And uh, I think this is a T40 Torx bit. And these things amaze me every time because as you can see, these ones are all metal on the bottom while these have metal bars, but plastic supports on all four corners. These first three all had crossbars with just a little bolt or screw and a washer. Whereas this one had, instead of a washer, it just had a screw with these four metal plates. Yet by looking at them, they're all made by the same manufacturer and they all were holding, um, I believe the same liquid. Now I got to these three and they all have a smaller Torx bit probably a T30. So I'm gonna have to run back to the garage, to my toolbox to get the adequate bit to get these ones going. But um, it's just funny, you know, I've processed so many of these and cut them, opened them up, you know, cut down um, the, the tanks and everything. And they're all very different from where the bolts or screws are placed to, um, you know, just like the way that they're fastened and sometimes like the size of the actual uh, spacing of the holes on, on the grates is different. You can see that these are round tubular metal, whereas these are square. So there's really no rhyme or reason to it. Um, I just find it kind of funny.
right, so we got all seven of the cages empty. The bladders are out. And now I'm gonna show you a little something that I do to consolidate the, uh, the bladders. Um, some guys might use a Sawzall or something, but after all, we do a lot of firewood here. So we're gonna use the Milwaukee hatchet, little battery powered chainsaw. And um, I learned something from Adam over at Hometown Acres. So thanks for sharing your knowledge, Adam. Um, he cuts these things down basically on all four corners at the top, um, or I'm sorry, three sides at the top and then down all four corners vertically and makes them so that they kind of lay flat as if you were breaking down a cardboard box. Then he folds them in onto each other and throws them out at the dump. Or he has, I, I believe his uh, refuse service come and pick them up the garbage van. I have the privilege of being able to go to our local dump that takes plastic as recycling. And um, they do take these, I checked. Um, now these have been washed out thoroughly before I even pick them up. Um, my contact won't really let them leave. Um, just due to liability reasons in case anything were to happen. He doesn't want it traced back to him. Um, but at, at the very end of the day, even if there are trace, traces of chemicals in them, these were all from a water treatment plant and the chemical that was in them is ultimately used to clean our water. So it is safe for water and stuff like that. Um, it is non-flammable, but, uh, we're going to go ahead and cut all these down using the hatchet and, uh, break them down like cardboard boxes, fold them up like a present, and we'll have a nice stack to bring to the dump in the future. tote, cut open, like a present. You can see there is still a little bit of sludge in there, but that's all right. I'm going to cut it a little bit more at the bottom edge here just so that to get it to lay flat. <laughs> Jump on it a few times, 
And there we go. One bladder somewhat broken down. Maybe we'll give it another cut here just to get it to lay flat. go. I'm going to continue doing the rest. All right, guys, that was quite a process. I've never really processed quite so many totes all at once, including cutting down the bladders. When I first started out, I used to just bring the bladders one by one to the uh, recycling center hole and they would just crush them with the machine there. But now that they are all crushed, I can bring them in one load. A um, Couple things I learned. As I said, I've never done this many simultaneously, so I learned a couple things, uh, you know, just comparing each way that I cut them. Um, and I did cut them differently. As you can see, the two on the bottom here are laying like perfectly flat, pretty much like that one. Whereas this one on the top is bowed out at the top. Um, so what I was doing that I found to be different is that on the side with this hump, with the nozzle, if you cut around it, kind of like a rainbow, you can uh, lay that side a lot flatter. And if you make your top corner piece that has the overhang, any side but that side, it will pretty much lay perfectly flat like a pancake. Whereas on this one, for instance, I made the top flap on the same side as the nozzle. And despite cutting it, you can see I did cut it. It just doesn't want to lay quite as flat because it has that extra top part. Um, now my plan for these is that I'm going to stack them up and throw one of these big ratchet straps around them and just make it like a big present. And then I'll load them in the back of the truck like that undo the strap once I get to the recycling center and throw them in the big dumpster. Um, I ran out of just about every battery I, I brought with me. I brought the four, I brought the six or what is that, five. And then I even ended up switching the to the two um, just because I wasn't using the ratchet anymore. Um, the little Milwaukee Fuel Chainsaw works really well. It cuts through it really fast, although it can kind of be like a bucking Bronco. Um, you'll, you saw at the end, I switched out to the angle grinder, which works well, but it's a lot slower and I feel like it really stresses the machine out. Also, um, these cutting wheels are pretty thin, so they kind of bend and flex when you're making these cuts. Um, so a Sawzall would probably be the best option, but I don't have a cordless Sawzall, so I went with the cordless chainsaw. But yeah, these are all processed up. Now um, I'm gonna have to run back to the house again and get a freshly charged battery for the grinder so we can cut out all these faces to the totes. Well guys, there we go. Final package, all wrapped up, seven IBC bladders. You can see the remnants of the water and liquid and stuff dripping out there um it's a hell of a lot more compact than seven full-size bladders that's for sure um bad news is i just ran back to the garage at my toolbox 
and the power strip inside of it with all my battery chargers was turned off must have hit it by accident so i am all out of freshly charged batteries so we are going to have to postpone the cutting of the ibc totes for another time but let's face it that's the easiest part you guys all know how to do that um for those of you who haven't used ibc totes for firewood before this is a good solution if you get them with the bladders um again i learned this from adam at hometown acres so thanks again adam really appreciate you sharing that video because this is a, a lot easier than hauling them out one by one so guys that's going to wrap up this video as you can see i am covered in white plastic dust as is the ground but such is life this will all be covered up by about six inches of millings um, hopefully in the next couple weeks when shane was here earlier in the beginning of the video we took out his rolling uh measuring stick and we measured out the square footage of everything back here and we want to do about six inches deep of millings so we calculated that we're going to need about 12 triaxle loads of millings um you know each load being somewhere between 15 to 18 yards um 12 is on the i guess say the conservative side we can always take more i'm going to do the little road going up to the shelter logics we're going to expand the little parking area out where i normally keep the dump trailer and the red truck so the more the better but that should be coming hopefully fingers crossed i know i keep saying it but within the next couple of weeks whenever this uh company starts their project in the uh town over from us we'll be getting the millings so that's it if you guys like the video give us a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button do a lot of videos like this cutting totes filling them with firewood um any questions comments or feedback things i could have done differently put them in the comment section below that's it I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.